All right, guys, this is this uh, Ransom Sims and Jeffries stationary engine that we're doing the mounting of some of the hardware. We're doing the cylinder mount and we're doing the regulator mount. Um, I wasn't going to show a video on doing this because it's it's fairly laborious and I'm really taking my time due to the, the type of material this, this duplex stainless is just shocking stuff to, to work with. But I just wanted to show the importance of setting something up and getting the foundations right. So I've got this mounted in the cradle. I've looked at every type of configuration that I could use, nodding the head backwards and forwards, how I could have it orientated at 90 degrees and use the head in this direction, nodding the head back, but I couldn't get anything that really worked well. So I've used the cradle and I've rotated the whole boiler um, to the correct angle. And this one here is a nominal angle of 20 degrees from centre, but I'll show you how I had to do the setup on this to get that, that absolutely right. Um, the other thing I've done too is I've clocked the outside edge of the boiler. Now this boiler does have a little bit of a woof in it. That's just the nature of this stuff. Um, but uh, it's clocked up normal within 0.1 of a millimetre, so I'm very happy with that. And also the outer firebox wrapper has also clocked up at about the same. So I'm really happy with that. Um, you see down here where I've shimmed it. And I've also at the back there, I've got an extension leg, I'll show you that. And I've got a, uh, a jacking bolt underneath there, also supporting the other side with a finger, finger clamp through the firebox hole. I'll take you around the other side and we'll show you what's going on there. And then we'll show you the, uh, the cylinder actually bolted up on this. And uh, I've got absolutely no clearance to work with this one. If I'm out even a couple of thou on these holes, it's going to bind up. But um, we'll show you where we're at with that. All right, so this is the setup from the back head. Um, I've got a center line scribed right up through there. I also have a mark for the center of the barrel. Um, what I did initially to get this set up was I set this up on my surface plate and I set dead square with a square to that center line. I was then able to sit the cylinder on top, use my Wixley gauge and zero it out on the square and then come up to this face here which is the square face and bring that around until I got exactly zero zero and I had to do a little bit of shimming underneath the back head corners here to get that exactly right but uh, very happy with that and then I did a second check just down the face of the outer wrapper and that was that was that was pretty much spot on square so I was happy with that position there and I was able to mark a perimeter line all the way around once I'd done that I put some super glue, stuck it down, and I was able to use my transfer punch, 5mm transfer punch, come through and punch each of those holes. So I had the row across the one side and a row down the other side. So I've already drilled and tapped these ones. But let's show you how this, uh, this cylinder fits up now. I'm just using socket header cap screws for this. I'm sure the customer is going to use some little hex heads. They may well be studs with uh, little hex nuts on them. And I can tell you drilling this stuff gives you a heart attack. So they're all nicely snugged away and uh, there's a perfect fit up. I'm really, really happy with that. I'll take it off the stand and take you around and show you. All right, so that's all our studs, all our cap screws in place and they, uh, they fit it up perfectly. And uh, still very happy, although you probably can't see it in there, but there are centre pop marks right through there, and they're all dead smack on the centre, so I'm happy with that positioning. The next rotation is going to be 43 degrees around from the uh, the vertical. So it's going to have quite a twist in it this, uh, this next time around to get these last sets of holes. But once again, those holes need to be drilled and tapped directly through the centre line. So it's fairly critical that I get that I get that set up right so that so when the faces do come on, they're coming down nice and square on that face. All right, we've got another little thing we need to deal with. And I've got to do a little bit of machining on this, but that's the, the regulator. You can see where the regulator steam admission point is here. So my brother's put a plate in underneath this and then back welded the top and also back welded around the bottom. And I've got to put a, a six mil hole into that to, to feed up into the uh, into the regulator. And I'll show you what our little issue is there. Right, so this is the uh, unit that the customer has made. And we have a little bit of an issue with this face just here. It's not square to the cylinder. And when I butt this up to here, 
It's okay in this direction, but in this direction, you can see it moving up. So it's not square to the face. So I'm going to need to set this little unit up on some parallel somehow and give that face a lick to get that squared up. And that's going to have an O-ring seal inside it, I believe. All right, well, I'm going to get set up to do these uh, last four holes on the cylinder. So uh, this took me nearly a day to get this, this set up right. But as I said, to get that foundation right is extremely important. One thing I'll point out too is you'll see a stainless steel wrapper in here. And it's very, very important that we don't get any iron contamination on this uh, 2000 duplex stainless steel. All the formers that we use to form this up, including the inner firebox, which is a very tight bends, uh, all the formers that uh, my brother Andy made up for that, have had the stainless steel wrapping put around it so that uh, as you're pulling down on the dies or pushing down the dies to do the forming, you're not wiping it with steel. So you're not going to get any iron contamination into that duplex stainless. So very, very critical when you're using this material that you do protect it from any iron contamination. Um, all the belts that have been used on this have been um, zircon belts. So no garnet, all zircon, so it's fairly inert. So uh, my brother Andy's been very, very particular about um, how he's done this boiler. And I can tell you the TIG welding work on this is just beautiful. But uh, I will show you guys the uh, the inner firebox uh, that is ready now. But I'll give uh, I'll get some shots of the uh, inner firebox at some stage and show you what they look like. They've been clamped down nice and rigid there, as you can see. Finger clamping, as I said, I've got a small clamp right at the very very back, picking up the uh, the far corner. All right, well, I'll get these uh, last four drilled and tapped and fingers crossed. And then we'll have a look at uh, trying to get this thing, uh, this regulator, sorted out and get it uh, off it up and squared up. Well, I thought I'd just quickly show you the setup for this. So I've made up a pointer that comes through and that's pointing directly to the center line of the boiler. We've got the boiler rotated around at 43 degrees, which is what it needs to be, but we can rotate that backwards and forwards a little bit as we need to, so to get the holes right. I'll take this pointer out because I can't get the length. I've got the table drop right down at the moment. We'll put the short pointer in and we'll see how that lines up with the holes. I don't know how well this is going to pick this up, but I'm about a quarter of a mil off this way. So I'm going to bring that back quarter of a mil um, to get that to line up with all of my center pop marks all the way through here. Quarter of a mil on that angulation is going to be down to, to seconds as a degree. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. It's still going to go so close to the center of the barrel when I drill through. It's not going to be uh, not going to make any difference at all. All right, we'll get set up uh, and get the center drilled, drilled through, and then we'll get them tapped, and then we'll bop the, uh, the cylinder down, and we'll see how it's all looking. So once you get on the back, I've got that packed finger clamp down into the firebox and a clamp down on the end here with a support underneath it so that's not that's not going anywhere that's uh, that's locked in there nice and tight this one here might be a little bit more wonky within about 0.02 of a degree on this one across here and it's within about 0.03 of a degree on this one here so we've got to remember this is a fabrication and uh, i know andy has spent an awful long time straightening this out to get it as close as he possibly can and as I said, this uh, this duplex stainless is just shocking stuff to try and work with, uh, especially welding it. Uh, it buckles and bows with the slightest bit of heat out. All right, guys, well, I'll get those drilled, and we'll bring you back when we've got the uh, the cylinder mounted, and we'll see how we're looking. I thought I'd bring you along on one of these little drilling adventures on this and just show you the technique that you need to use with this particular type of stainless. Now you'll note the drill is running very, very slow. I've got the stop set on the uh, on the quill so I can come down to a dead point. I don't need to worry about trying to uh, work out where I'm at. I know where I finish. I've got to keep a constant pressure on this thing all the time. As I said, if you let this dwell, you're in real trouble. This is 
bring the pressure on. Now, I've got a compensating plate underneath this. The actual material here is four mil thick, so I'm actually gonna pull up just before that. About there. I'm gonna apply a little bit more lubricant, cutting fluid, before I go into that compensating plate. Um, this has been annealed a little bit, I guess you might say, with the heat that's gone into it. That compensating plate has, and it's fairly tough. Total depth we're going on this is 8 mil. Once you start cutting, don't stop. And keep a constant pressure the entire time. As soon as you let that pressure off and let it dwell, it work hardens and you will not be able to drill that hole. As I'm going with this, I keep an eye on the digital readout on my quill. I know when I'm getting close uh, and I need to retract that very, very quickly. I can't let that, that drill rub in any way, shape or form on that. Now, if it rubs on the edges, it'll work hard and I won't be able to tap it. Uh, trials, I broke a number of taps trying to get this technique on this stuff right. And as I said, I went around to a number of uh, workshops that have used this stuff and uh, got some good ideas. But as you can see how slow that, you hit that, uh, that drill has to run. Uh, any faster than that, you'll rub and you're in strife again. All right, we'll get the rest of these finished off and we'll get them tapped and we'll, uh, we'll mount the solid up and see how it all looks. All right, I hope I'm not going to put the mods on myself. I'm just going to show you how you have to tap this stuff because starting off, no worries. But then you'll feel it starting to grab and it gets very gummy. Now, I know you're not supposed to break the chip on these, but I can only go incrementally. You can really feel it grabbing. You've just got to be so gentle with it. And it gets worse the deeper you go. That's really grabbing now. So I've only got to go eight mil deep, but it takes me about 10 minutes to do it. It's just the smallest increments each time. All right, I'll bring you back when we've got down to the bottom. Right, we're on to the last one. This stuff in its soft state is just so gummy too. I just want to go incrementally in case it does break. It might have a chance of screwing out. I've only got four more of these to do for the uh, for the regulator housing. Just put it at the bottom there. Oh. Stick my heart back in my chest now. Jeez, I hate doing those. All right, done. I'll get these smoothed off and uh, we'll get the cylinder mounted up and we'll see how that looks. Like I said, I'm gonna stick my heart back in my chest. Uh, it is very, very stressful. Last thing I want to do is break a tap off in a boiler like this. The, the amount of work that's gone into this, you just <laughs> you don't want to stuff it up. All right, guys, I'll see you back in a tick when I've got him mounted. All right, it's got one more reserve on the back. As you can see, they go very, very easily. absolutely wrap how that's come up that was absolutely spot on as I said you only need to be a three or four thou one way or the other and this isn't going to bolt down so all nice and loose going in so very very happy about that all right as I said I'll set up and do that uh, regulator body next to get that squared up on the face it's fairly critical we get that right otherwise we're going to have a leaking steam everywhere but yeah just a very short video just to show you the importance of setting up the foundation and getting everything absolutely spot on before you start doing your machining. 
And it does take time and you've got to take the time to do it right because if you don't do it now, you're really going to pay for it later on. Particularly on something like this when you've got a lot of rigging, um, let's call it rigging, uh, with linkages and rods that you've got to uh, that you've got to get everything lined up absolutely spot on. So if you don't get this part right, it's going to make it so much harder down the track. All right, guys, we'll see you soon.